awakening with brahma kumaris a very warm welcome to awakening with brahma kumaris welcome sister shivani thank you so much om shanti om shanti to you in the last episode we were talking about uh, dependency uh, on happiness how we are dependent on so many things for happiness and you said happiness it is me who creates happiness me who creates sadness is finally i am responsible for it uh, well we tried uh, after listening to you and it's very difficult to understand how to be happy when you've not achieved something in life there are two dynamics in the way we can work in life one is if i achieve this then i'll be happy and the other is i'll be happy while achieving this if i'll be happy while achieving this it's like you're on a journey mm. let's say from x to y you're on a journey so y is my destination whether i'm going by road by train by air or whatever and when we leave for the journey uh what does that other say to us have a safe journey mm. you'll never say reach your destination this way or that way anyways what matters is reaching the destination no. that's what is uh, today's uh is the in thing that you've got to by hook or crook you got to reach the reach. destination okay so let's look at the programming this way that i've set a goal for myself in life whether it's marks for a student whether for a professional it's my position in my organization where i have to reach mm. whatever it may be or it could be something in my relationships i've set a goal for myself that this is where i have to go very important we we're not going to be able to lead our life without goals and aims and objectives because if it's without goals we'll become very passive you know i wouldn't know where i'm heading so i set a goal now the other thing that i do with it is i tell myself i'll be happy if when i reach the goal when i reach the goal hai na if nahi i am going to reach the goal i'm very sure i'm working towards it and i'm going to reach the goal so i'll be happy when i reach the goal when yeah. i reach the goal so now the goal could take 6 months it could take 6 years whatever depending on the goal i've set so i start moving let's say for a professional it is i'm going to reach this particular position in my organization in the coming 2 years i will reach this position right now i am here now i start my journey the way i work the way i'm with my colleagues the way i am performing continuously at the back of my mind when i reach here i will be happy yes right now if there is a little delay in the way i'm working if people around me are a little uncooperative if there are a little obstacles coming in the way on my journey what will happen to me unhappy yeah because i will create stress i will create anxiety why because you are coming in the way Of, of my, my happiness. Okay. Not just of my goal, of my happiness. You know, let's say I'm going to walk from here to there mm. and my mind says happiness is there. Okay. So I start walking. Now while I'm walking, you're in the way. And because you're in the way and I see you as in the way of Up, my obstacle. happiness, of my happiness, I'll do anything to get you out of the way. it could be shout at you if you're just a junior i will shout at you because i will say work fast because you're in the way of my happiness mm. if you are a colleague and i think you're a threat to me reaching the goal i can plot anything against you to get you out of the way if i have to compromise on my values let's say you stand in the way and you say if you're honest you'll have to stop here for one week and if you just tell a lie you can go there quickly faster Mm. I wouldn't even think twice before using the other method. I'll just tell a, a lie. I'll tell a lie. That's where I started compromising on my values and principles on my journey. Because I thought my values and principles were delaying my process. But if you could get there. happiness if you say a lie, how does it matter? If you're going to get happy, we'll see whether we get happiness. No, right now we're still on the journey. Still we haven't the reached the destination. But I can create anger. I can create stress. I can compromise on my values and principles. Doing all this on the way, what have I been creating on the journey? All these negative emotions. Okay. So for six months, 
I create anxiety, stress, it can have a disturbance in my relationships, it will create problems for me with people at work, my inner state of mind will be in all upheaval, it will start having an effect on my physical health. But doing all this after six months, on that decided date, I have reached my goal. Then? How will I feel? Don't you think you'll be happy? I will. Hmm? After six months. Yes. I will be happy. Yes. For how long? Hmm, that's a good question. Important is, if I have created all these negative emotions on the way, oh. I've experienced and I have created and I have transmitted to everyone around me. And I'm because of that, also months. receive, not only after six months, even during those six months, I'm doing all this exchange of negativity. All this is happening during those six months. So it's like I've fallen down, I've hurt myself, I've stumbled, I'm bruised, I'm everything, and I reach there. I've reached there. But by the time I reach there, I'm totally in pain. Okay? But I've reached there. So I'm very happy that I've reached my goal. But my conditioning says that happiness is dependent on achievement. So once I've achieved it... Hmm. You want to further achieve? Yeah. So it is becoming achieve, 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 achieve. achieve, and, achieve. achieve. and during achieving, 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 you go home and say, Oh, I'm so sorry, I've been... I've been behaving like this, I'm in such coming home at late night, I'm coming, disturbing you all, troubling you all, I'm so sorry, yeah. but I have to achieve that target. I have to achieve because my happiness is there. So it's basically setting your goals, even if you set six month goals or two year goals, it means six months I'm going to get bruised and hurt emotionally. So this means we are not just postponing happiness, we are actually creating unhappiness all the way throughout and which is going to multiply and multiply when you say achieve, 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 multiplying of unhappiness, unhappiness, unhappiness and in the end what will happen? Exactly. So now just see your life, let's say you've set six monthly goals. In six months A, destination, another six months B, another six months C, let's say. First six months to reach A, I was bruised because I created hurt, anger, whatever. So by the time I reach A destination, my emotional strength has already become weaker. Weaker. Now the next journey from A to the next destination B. B. By this time, my strength is already less. Same environment, same people, same situations, but a lower emotional strength, which means I'm going to get even more bruised because my strength is low to face situations. So even then I reach B. Emotional strength? My power to face situations. Emotional strength. I will get hurt more easily. Irritable. I will react. I will get irritated. But I... don't you think all these things make you physically also weak? Physically, it is already there. It's going to have an effect on the body. But when we are at that young age, we are in our 20s or 30s, it has less impact on the body. So we think it's absolutely fine. This is natural. This is the way to live. Of course, now recently it has started showing signs of the body at a much sooner age but otherwise till your 30s you're fine it's after that that you will start feeling and you will start getting hypertension and diabetes and all but that's a later stage but because we accepted stress as a part of our life we also accept the physical symptoms as a part of our life you know today the belief system is stress is natural yeah but don't you think that when you have to achieve something how can, I still don't understand how a person can be very happy without achieving. He comes home as a failure, tomorrow he comes home with so many problems, he goes for a job, for, for, uh, for example, and goes around and round and round, he doesn't get it and... Okay, let's say I'm looking for a job. Okay. And I've tried for the last six months and I'm not getting a job and I'm very demotivated and I'm very upset and you're a friend, what hmm. would you say to me? As a friend, I say, don't worry, yaar. Hota hai, it'll happen, don't worry, one day you'll get it. And if maximum, if, if you need something from me, I can I mean, help you monitor but, it. But if I say, how can I not be worried? I haven't got a job for the last six months. So then what are you going to say to me? I'll just say, by worrying, will you get it? So then, just let's say to ourselves, by worrying, will I get it? <laughs> but that is very easily said then. But than. that's the solution. Because the more I worry, the more my state of mind is low, the more it shows on my body language, the more I lose enthusiasm, how will I get a job? What is needed oh. for a job? For me to get a job, I need confidence. I need to be enthusiastic. 
I need to be ready to face the challenges what the new job offers. But if I'm like this, my state of mind... Demoralizing, do you think I will keep somebody like that for yes, my Yes, so will you keep so? It's not about, you know, what has happened. It's about what I need to do now. How does my state of being have to be? I have to take care of that. Otherwise, I'm into the vicious cycle of negativity. And then why four? I can try 10 jobs and I'm not going to get it because I'm not taking care of that candidate who's going for the job. Who's going to keep a person who's demotivated and given up in life? Who's going to keep a person who's lost his internal strength to tolerate and to be with people and to create team spirit? Who's going to hire a candidate like that? So whatever may be the situation, however challenging they may be, I'm not going to get the solution unless I take care of myself. My business is not doing well, so I have to worry. But if I, have, if I worry, I'll still not do well. And if I want to do well, I will have to first be well here. Then I'll be able to do anything well outside. And second, most important, even if I don't do well, at least I can take care of myself. I had a guru who told me once, that she said there was a man who was uh, having a very, very big problem in the courts, had, had a court case and he was very much worried about it. And he was furthermore worried about his wife's uh, health she was very sick. And one side the courts and the lawyers and the problems of the cases and the other side the wife. And he was so worried, so worried, so worried. Finally, after about 15 years, he won the court case and his wife became all right. But he fell sick and he died. Yeah, that's because... But in spite of listening to this story from her, why did it not affect me? Why was I so... It was so difficult for me to understand what you're telling me right now. It's about priorities in life. What are my responsibilities in life? Mm. Normally, anybody can just sit. My family, a my home, my work. Uh -huh. My family, then. My job. My job, then. And uh, what else? My work. My family, my job, my work, whatever. My work. Anything else? My home, you said. My home. Anything else? My friends, my relatives, my society, relationship, my relationships, my, my relatives, my relationships, and then what else? My country. But I, I did not say, I know where you're telling, I did not say myself. Exactly. Yes, I didn't say that, yes. See, this is the problem. My Honestly, list of I didn't even think of that first. Yeah. So my we can word. go on to, from my family, to taking the responsibility of the entire world. But, but not my own responsibility. So I, the one who's taking the responsibility of everyone else without taking my own responsibility. It's like, let's say I'm a family of five people and four of them are not well, they're ill. Mm. And I want to take the responsibility of taking care of them, of healing them. I'll only be able to do it if, if I'm fine. This is about physical health. But now you take the same equation onto emotional health. Mm. I want to take care of my children. I want to take care of my wife, my husband, my parents. I want to see to it that they are happy, but I'm in pain. I'm so sad that they're not able to uh, do well in class. They're not able to do well. I wanted him to come first in class. I wanted him to become a swimming champion. I wanted him to become a tennis player or a golfer. But why do you want to do all that so that they will be? I want them to achieve something in life. And so that they will be? Happy. Yeah. Finally. Finally, I want everyone around me to be happy. And if they are happy, I'll, ha I'll be happy. But it was supposed to be the other way around. We thought, I'll take care of all this, then they will be happy, and when they are happy, then I will be happy. And spirituality teaches us, when I am happy and take care of them, then they will be happy. Hmm. So when I'm happy, I'm also, uh, my vibrations around the situation in the house, wherever I go, I, I, you know, I'm bubbling with happiness and I make other people happy too. Because you make them stronger. See, you mean every... to say you become stronger by happiness? So what is happiness? Happiness is an internal strength. Happiness doesn't mean excitement. I'm not going to be jumping and dancing the whole day. I've not, I've lost my job. I'm not excited about it. Happiness is strength? Again, I'm not able to understand. It's what a beautiful line. I mean, can you explain this? See, at a time in the mind, there can only be one thought. 
correct? At a time, only one thought. You can't think uh, two, two, two things Two thoughts at like, the same yeah, time? Yeah. At a time, one thought. So if one thought, then one quality. Okay. So that one quality could either be the right quality or the not so right quality. Okay. Right? So if I'm creating a pure, powerful, which today in the world we say positive thought, then it's of a good quality. If I'm creating a negative thought, an unpleasant thought, a thought of anxiety, pain, worry, it's mm. a wrong thought. Correct. If it's the right thought, I feel good. If it's not a right thought, I feel low. If it's the right thought, okay. and then I'm feeling good, that is stability. If it's not the right thought, my feeling is low, and that is weakness. So opposite of weakness is strength. The so stability is strength. Is strength. Yes. So you're there stable. This, you're stable. Oh, that's why they say you're such a strong person. You're so stable in spite of so many things happening. Absolutely. You're still stable and strong and standing like a Rock. Mountain or a rock, whatever Absolutely. they say. Absolutely. So if you're stable, you're strong, that is strength, then your way of responding to situations. Like you said, I want my child to have good marks. Okay. Mm. I want my child to have good marks, but it's not necessary this will happen every time. There could be a time where he will not get those marks which I think he should get or what he's capable of getting or what I feel he should get because then he'll do better in life. The day he doesn't get those good marks, what is my state of mind? Upset. Now, is that good for me? No. Is that good for my child? No. Then good for who? No one. Then why am I creating it? I thought And it the was... marks didn't create my feeling. But I thought it was just normal to be upset and feel sad and go and say, oh, so sorry, beta, this and that. You don't say sorry you. to your beta when he gets less marks. You, you, you shout at him for getting less <laughs> marks. So, and then once I get upset, my child gets upset. My child gets upset, us. my child gets demotivated. And in that demotivated state of mind, I want him to do well. Hmm. So the energy that I'm giving to the people around me, whom I claim I'm taking their responsibility, is not the right energy. So and that's why I'm not fulfilling my responsibility in the right way. Hmm. Responsibility, my child has got less marks. My responsibility at that time would be first to take charge of my mind, fine. First, I have to remain stable so that I don't react, I don't shout at him, I don't upset him. Then my responsibility is to take care of his state of mind. Hmm. Then my third responsibility is to take care that he studies and gets good marks next time. So what we're doing is the opposite. We're depleting his energy. We are first we are depleting his, our energy. Our energy, his energy and... Uh, his, and then uh, we're saying now study. Self-esteem, we lower his self-esteem. We make him feel small and we make him feel a failure. You have, I'm not proud of you and he feels that I did, my father is not proud of my, me. And my father is not and happy have, because I'm of me. I've made everybody unhappy. Oh, but, ah, yeah, that's why there's so many suicides going on. The only reason why a child commits suicide is because he's not able to face his parents after a failure. It's not because he failed. It's because he doesn't want to see his parents unhappy. And he holds himself responsible for the parents' unhappiness. Because the parents conditioned him the whole year that we will be happy only when you do this. It's condition or it's a burden? It's a pressure. Deep pressure Constant to perform. Constant pressure. Yeah. So is this my responsibility? I thought that it was my responsibility to see that my child achieves his goal, maybe in studies or sports or whatever it is. But honestly, after listening to this, uh, to you, I realized that I have been uh, doing just the opposite. Every individual's life is based on four aspects. Physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual. Like the chair we are sitting on, four legs. Physical, mm. intellectual, emotional, Spiritual. spiritual. My physical health, my intellectual development, my emotional state of being, and my spiritual health. If I want to be successful in life, and I want my children to be successful in life, successful in the whole sense, then all the four aspects 
need to be equally balanced. When mm. you said, when I look at my responsibilities towards my child, I see his academic performance, mm. extracurricular performance, and I take care of his physical health. My child should get the best home, the best food, you know, best exercise, everything. So we take care of the physical and the intellectual. We take care of the social also, that they should have good friends, get good extracurricular activities. But how is my child feeling inside? No one's taking care. And this pressure that we keep on constantly applying on the child, physically he may be doing very well, academically also doing very well. But because of the constant pressure and the constant comparison with other people, the constant criticism that he gets from parents as a source of motivation to perform is actually depleting his emotional strength. So I have to ask myself whether I am fulfilling my responsibilities. Tomorrow, he could grow up to be a good doctor, engineer, lawyer, whatever. Mm -hmm. He could grow up to be physically very strong. But if he's not emotionally strong, then will he be a good human being? And if he's not a good human being, a pure, powerful human what being. What happens if you're not very emotionally very strong? If I'm a doctor, I'm a very good doctor. Hmm. So technically, I'm very good. But if I'm not a powerful human being, then I will get irritated very soon. I will react very soon. I do not have empathy with my patients and with my colleagues. I cannot get along with people because I'm very intolerant, which means my ego is... So then I call myself a good doctor. Maybe it's your uh, inferiority complex also, maybe. So, because no one took care of it while I was growing up and no one taught me how to take care of it because they only taught me how to read, how to write, how to speak, how to talk. Nobody taught me how to think. But that's what happened, Sister Shivani. We knew only about IQ earlier, then came EQ. Now it's come uh, SQ. Yeah, spiritual questions. But the, the way I'm, I yeah, The am. world never knew about it. We were not we just, aware we say, about it. Look at this guy, his IQ is so much. Oh my God, 130, 145, and so and so. Which is important. There's no doubt about that. Your IQ is important, but then so is your emotional strength. But when I was a child, I, if I remember, I've been with, whether it's poor people or middle class, or upper middle class, I don't know about very, very, very rich people. But those guys used to even slap the children to teach them. Even in schools. If you get less marks, they used to get scared to go home. Right. So we need to ask ourselves whether we are fulfilling our responsibilities. Yes, one responsibility, we are getting them to perform well. But my second responsibility of making them individual, making the individual a very strong human being. Life is going to have a lot of challenges. Today your child has passed with the highest marks and come first in class. But will his marks help him to face all the challenges in life? He might be emotionally, as you said, so weak that he won't, to, won't be able to compete with the other things in life. Exactly. What if he has to face a small failure in life? Hmm. He won't be able to face it. What if he has to work with people whom he cannot adjust and accommodate with? He won't with? be able to adjust easily anyway. So that is what it is. We did not take care of that responsibility. And why were we not taking care of that aspect of our children's life? Because we were not taking care of that aspect of our own life. Hmm. See, it was an aspect which was ignored. That we, I'm supposed to take care of my emotional strength. It's ignored. I'm only supposed to take care of everything outside. So everything outside of my life, everything outside of your life, everything outside of my children's life, everything outside. Husband says, my job is to get money. I, I, I'm giving you money. Now you take care of the children. That's all. Don't talk to me so further. Because he feels that I've earned. So if I've earned, I've given all the needs and the necessities and the luxuries. And if I've given all this, they'll be happy. Because happiness was supposed to be coming from outside. No? Uh, you better give them good toys, good clothes. Hello, I've done my duty. You do your job. Now, further, if he doesn't study or study, his emotional problem, that's his problem. And we easily put it to the sanskaras or something, or his class fellows, or his company, or his school. Uh, all these uh, he, guys he goes around with, and special classes, and the neighbors. We keep on blaming other because people. Because we are not ready to take that responsibility. It's easy to earn and to send your child to the best school, and give him the best food, and the best home, and best everything. But it's a challenge also, to make your child emotionally strong. When you say, I'm not 
uh, ready to take responsibility. Somewhere also, it's I never knew about it also, no? that this is also a responsibility. Nobody opened our eyes also earlier. So maybe it's this the time is also to do that duty. now. Huh? It's time to do that now. <laughs> okay, it's time to do that now. And thanks to you for doing that now. It's very important, but the only uh, thing to be kept in mind is like you said, you know, for a parent and a child, it, it's possible that a parent has not gone to school, but they send their child to the best school. It's possible that a parent doesn't eat, but gives food to the child. But it's not possible for a parent to have his child happy without the parent being happy himself. You cannot make your child emotionally strong without being emotionally strong yourself. So that's where the responsibility comes, first on yourself. Uh, the most important thing what I like today is that I have to realize that first I have to be emotionally strong. I have to be uh, physically, spiritually and uh, what was the other one? Socially. What? So, whatever. <laughs> I have to have everything and I have to take the responsibility that I am responsible to create all these things and or part this knowledge to my child. Absolutely. Would you be kind enough to do a small little... Um, meditation for uh, viewers. Definitely. Let's just sit back and look at our journey of life. Aims, objectives, goals and achievements. Milestones to cover. That's my journey. Let me look at myself on the journey. The traveler With the changed consciousness, happiness is not at the destination. Happiness is my state of being on the journey. I am happy, stable, in control, powerful while I'm on the journey. Whatever may be the obstacles on the way, my first responsibility to take care of my state of being, the way I respond, this is my responsibility. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, be stable and happy till we meet again. Namaskar. Today we've discussed Happiness is a state of being created while working towards the goal, not a feeling to be experienced after achieving the goal. If we believe that happiness is after achievement, then we create stress, anger and fear while achieving and thus do not experience happiness. Before I take the responsibility of those around me, I need to take responsibility of my own thinking and feelings. When I'm happy, and take care of others, then they will be happy. If you wish to discuss your problem or have a question to ask or want to know your nearest Raj Yoga Meditation Center, call us on 099 99